Hey guys, this is test 30, game 2. This is the messages on an answering machine game. This game is particularly difficult. It involves a couple of different tasks. We have, you know, the six people, F, G, H, L, P, and T, but we don't actually know whether they're all being selected here. It is possible that we will only have a few of them, or fewer than six anyway. And then we have to place those people in order. So this game has elements of both selection from, from the six people and then ordering, placing them in order in which they leave the messages one through six. So two different things to juggle here. The, mo the more important and more difficult aspect is actually the grouping element, the selection aspect of the game, because we have to know who we're placing in order before we actually do so. Now I've listed here a couple of the rules already. The first rule says that we have at most one person repeating. So I've written here max one repeater. Second rule, no person left more than three, so max three messages per person. The next rule is pretty simple. If H is on one, then P is on six. Now the remaining rules are a bit more complicated. They are all conditional and they link together. The third rule is conditional, yet it does not link with the other rules. So for that reason, I've written it separately. Now the first rule that we're going to link here, rule number four, if G goes, then F and P go also. So I'm going to write down G, then both F and P. If G is selected, then both F and P are selected as well. Note the arrows here, these are conditional rules. The next rule tells us that if we have F, then we will have P and T with all P's before all T's. So I have F here, I'm going to continue to say if F arrow P dash T. I know this could be a little bit confusing at first, let me explain. What I'm basically saying here is that if we have F, then we will have P and T with P before T. The dash here regards ordering, the arrows regard conditionality, regarding selection. So make sure not to get those two things mixed up. Make sure to put arrowheads on your arrows and do not, of course, put them on your linear, you know, or your ordering rules here. Now, because we have F by way of P, we no longer need to have this P down here. G is indirectly requiring P by way of F. The rules were redundant here in specifically listing that G required F and P. They could have just said G requires F, and that would have been sufficient to communicate the idea that G requires F and P because this, the next rule tells us that F requires P. Now, the next rule, the last rule tells us that if P goes, then H and L go also with H before L. So P requires H dash L. If we have P, then we will have H and L with H before L. So this is basically telling us that when we have G, we will have all six variables, and because we will have all six of them, nobody will repeat. So I'm going to write here on the side, we have all six, no repeats. That's when we have G. But what about when we don't have G? So what about if we don't have G, yet we do have F? If we have F, things turn out a little bit differently. If we have F, yet do not have G, so I'm gonna put you know G with a slash through it here. This is the case where we are not choosing G. If we do not have G yet we do have F, we do know of course that F requires P and T with P before T in all times and then P requires H and L with all H's before all L's. So if we have F yet do not have G, we will have five. So we have five people here and one goes two times. One of them will repeat and that person goes twice meaning they are repeating once. Now, what about if we lacked both G and F? You'll notice here that I'm essentially chopping off the beginning of that top chain, the first chain that I drew, because we can chop off sufficient conditions. Of course, we cannot chop off necessary conditions because they are required by the, the variables earlier in the chain. Nothing is telling us that we need to have G. They were just saying, if we have G, then we have F. So now I'm going to say what happens when we lack both G and F. So if G is out and F is out, what's going to happen? So of course, let's start with the, the following parts of the chain. If we have P, then we definitely have 
H and L with H before L, that is a given, it is something that is required by L, by, by P, I'm sorry. However, we don't necessarily need to have all P's before all T's as we did in the first two chains here. They're simply telling us that if we have F, then we have P before T. If we have F, then we will have all P's before all T's. However, when we lack F, we don't necessarily need to have P before T. We could just have P and T occurring anywhere else. Now the question becomes, could we have only P, H, and L? The answer is no, due to the first two rules of the game. We can only have one repeater, max, and only three messages per person, max. Now if these were the only three guys we had, P, H, and L, we would run into a problem if we wanted to reach our total of six messages. We would either have to have one of these guys going four times, or we would have more than one of these guys repeating, neither of which is acceptable based upon the first two rules of the game. So for that reason, we will have to have T as well, except now T is not necessarily after P. It could go before as well. So remember that you know, the arrows apply, imply conditionality, they do, not they do not imply ordering. So for that reason, H could actually occur before P in any of these scenarios. The conditional arrow was simply indicating that if we have P, we will have H and L as well, but does not tell us how P relates to H and L with regard to ordering. So this is our initial setup for the game. In this bottom scenario, we will have only four people and one of them goes three times. So this is our initial setup for the game. Now one thing you'll notice here is that in all three of these scenarios, H occurs before L. H before L, H before L, H before L. So no matter which scenario we are dealing with, we will, all ha we will always have all H's before all L's. So for that reason, we can infer that L is never first in any scenario, and H is never last in any scenario. Now, in the top two scenarios where we have G and where we have F but not G, in both of those cases all P's occur, occur before all T's, but not in the bottom scenario. Remember, that was a result of F being in. So we can only infer that L is never first, H is never last, not the other things. And this is our initial setup for the game. Question number six, general orientation question. As I always generally recommend, we want to take one rule at a time and apply it to all five choices looking for violations. So we could take, for example, the rule that H1 requires P6, the third rule of the game, very easy rule to test, and we find that choice C violates this, having H on 1, yet having T on 6, so C is eliminated. We can take the rule that we have only one repeater, and if we scan through the choices, we will find that, let's see, choice E has two H's and two L's. So H and L are both repeating, which is unacceptable. So for that reason, E is eliminated. Next, we can take the rule that we have, let's see, we have to have, um, when we have G, we have all six, no repeats. Choice B has G, yet does not have all six people. It is missing F and it is repeating T unacceptable. So for that reason, B is eliminated. We are now down to A and D. Choice A is violating the rule. If you look at A, we have, we do not have G yet, we do have F. So we are specifically in this middle possibility where we have five people, one goes twice. And if you look at that choice, you find that we have, have to have all P's before all T's in this scenario, yet choice A has P occurring after T. So for that reason, A is eliminated, and D is our answer to number six by process of elimination. Next, number seven, the first and last messages on the, messages on the machine could be the first and second left by whom? So for this question, it's very difficult to parse out for a moment. Let's go over what they're actually asking us for. They're saying that there is some guy who does the first and last messages, meaning message number one, and message number six. And those could be the first and second messages left by that person. So it's like there's some guy, I'll call him X, he, his first message is message number one, and then his second message is message number two. 
So for this reason, we can infer that they're ref they are referring to a scenario where we have one person going exactly two times. And of course, this is applying specifically to the middle possibility where we have one person going exactly two times. So who could that person be? Well, in this scenario, we do not have, we always have P occurring before T. So for that reason, in this particular scenario, P cannot go last and T cannot go first. We can also infer that H is not going last and L is not going first, which we know is a general rule as well, general inference. So none of L, T, H, or P could be this mystery person X. So H, L, P, and T, B, C, D, and E are all eliminated, leaving A as our answer. F could go both first and last, going exactly two times. That would, that would be perfectly fine. So A is our answer for number seven. Next, number eight, if G left the fifth message. So I'm going to go ahead and put G on five here, of course. But if you look at what they're asking us for, they're asking us when cannot T have gone? When couldn't T have gone? So when G goes, top possibility only here, all six, no repeats. When G goes, F goes, P and T go also with P before T. H and L go also with H before L. So in this possibility, P is not going on six and T is not going on one. So where, cannot, where can't T go? T cannot go on one. Notice that they did not actually need to tell us where specifically G was going. They could have just said if G was selected, but they're actually putting G on five just to try and get you to draw something when that's not really what you want to be doing to solve this question. That would be unnecessary. They're trying to get you to do more work than you actually need to do. So A is our answer for number eight. Next, number nine, must be true except question. So four of these choices must be true. Let's find them and eliminate them. Whatever remains will be our answer. Must L go? Yes, L is going in all three of these different possibilities. So for that reason, A is eliminated, it is a must. B, T goes exactly, T goes at least once. Yes, T is going in all three as well. B is eliminated. C, H goes exactly at least once. Yes, H goes in all three scenarios. C is eliminated. D, exactly one person left at least two messages. That is actually not a must because we could be in the top possibility here where we have no repeats meaning nobody goes at least twice, everybody goes only once. So D's our answer, I will look at E though. At least four people go. Yes, even at a minimum, we are always having P, H, L, and T in all three scenarios. So yes, we do always have at least four people going. D's our answer to number nine. Next, number 10. If P's only message is message number five, what could be true? So I'm gonna put down P on five here. Unfortunately, this question stem is not limiting us to any one of these three possibilities. We don't know which one they're referring to. All of them are still relevant at the moment. What could be true? Know where to really go from here. Let's just run through the choices. So A, H goes on one. Well, if H went on one, then we would need to have P on six. That's not happening here because this is P's only message for this scenario. So for that reason, A is eliminated. It is not a could. B, T goes exactly twice. If T went exactly twice, we would be in the middle possibility here where one person goes exactly twice. If we had two T's, we would run into a problem where we would only be able to fit one of them after P on five. And of course, we need to have all P's before all T's in this particular scenario. We can only fit one, not two. So for that reason, B is impossible as well. C, L goes exactly twice. No particular reason to believe that would pose a problem. I'll come back to that one later though. Anyway, D, L goes on two. If L went on two, then we would have to have H on one and H one requires P six. So for that reason, we would run into a major problem here. You know, L on two, H on one, P on six. We can only have exactly one P and that P is going on five in this scenario. So for that reason, D is impossible. Next choice E, F goes on three and four. That also does not really pose a problem. I'm gonna, at, at first glance, anyway, I'm gonna draw it off, draw it out here. If F goes on three and four, we run into a problem 
where we are once again, of course, in the middle possibility here. One person goes exactly twice. When F goes, all P's go before all T's, so therefore T would have to go on six. Then we have H and L with H before L, so H is going on one, L is going on two. However, H1 requires P6. We already have T on six, there's no room for P. So for that reason, E is bad, and we are left with C as our answer by process of elimination. I will draw it out for you though. If we have L going exactly twice, we don't really know exactly where it's gonna go, but the exactly twice is referring specifically to this middle possibility. So we have to have all P's before all T's. I'm gonna put T on six, because that's what we need to do here in that possibility. I'll put L on both like three and four. Then we could have H on two. I'm not putting H on one because that would activate the H1 P6 rule. And then finally, I will put F on one. This scenario works perfectly fine. There is no problem here. So for that reason, C is our answer to number 10.